the Insphere family banking concept using your freedom accounts. Today we're going to teach you how to build wealth and keep it. This is wealth for you and money for multi-generations. We're talking about money you can use now in the retirement where it's taxed advantage and if it's designed properly, taxes will never be owed. So let's begin by talking about two money men, Cornelius Vanderbilt, who is a railroad magnet, and Meyer Rothschild, a European banker. Vanderbilt died in 1877 with $105 million. That's like Bill Gates' kind of money today. He left a million dollars to Central University and renamed it Vanderbilt University. So he ended up giving his heirs $104 million or what was left. And less than 100 years later, there were no Vanderbilt millionaires and the majority of the money was gone. Meyer Rothschild, on the other hand, was a little bit older. He was European. He died in 1812. Best estimates are around $40 million. But he did it a little differently. He left a system for his heirs and his legacy. It was called a banking system. Here's the rules and regulations for the Rothschild Bank. The family wealth was to be kept together in one family bank. The family could take a loan from the family bank, but the loan must be repaid. The family must meet once a year to share lessons learned. If you don't go to the meeting, you're out of the family bank. Currently, at best estimates, the Rothschild fortune is somewhere in excess of $50 trillion. It's so high, nobody can actually count it. These are the people that fund the majority of the United States Federal Reserve. Meyer Rothschild left a plan. Can we do that? Let's look at how we might do that. Most people think to get ahead, they must work harder, stop spending, take more risk. This is the Dave Ramsey, my favorite radio entertainer, tells you to work hard, save your money. In 20 years, you'll be able to buy a house. But while you're saving your money, you might want to live in your parents' basement. It's a miserable way to do things. There are three ways to view money. Number one, as a spender. Number two, as an investor. And number three, as a banker. Let's look at the spender. Spender views money as a way to buy stuff. Every purchase costs interest. The borrower pays up, the cash buyer gives up that interest, and the interest itself never builds up. Now, let's further look at the investor. The investor views money as a way to buy investments. He trades dollars for investments in hopes that investment will increase. Every investment exposes him to risk, Every gain costs taxes. The investment risk game. Imagine you have $100,000 to invest. Write this down. The investment goes up by 10% the first year, and in the second year it goes down by 10%. Are you back where you started? If you did that or stopped the, uh, the video, you'll find out that you're not where you started. Try going up 25% in year one and down 25% in year two. You're nowhere near where you started. Back in 2008, people lost 50% of their investment. What do they have to earn the next year or the next couple of years to just break even? Write this down and figure it out. When you get your answer, email me. All right, let's go on to taxes. Taxes destroy wealth growth. For every dollar of taxes, those dollars in any dividends or interest or compounding will be lost forever. How does a banker view this? The banker views it as a way to make money. Every purchase is an opportunity to gain. The money keeps working, and the banker uses compound interest as his friend. Compound interest was once said by Albert Einstein to be the most powerful force in the universe. Our own in Sphere family banking system shows you how compound interest can be your friend. It's amazing how quickly your account will grow at a compounding of 5%. Nelson Nash, a gentleman who I met in Detroit about six or seven years ago, the designer of the Infinite Bank, who took permanent whole life insurance contracts apart and showed how they could be used as financial tools, said, once compound interest becomes your friend, your money will grow and grow, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. You can throw a paid-up policy in the drawer, and believe it or not, it's going to keep growing, 
dividends are going to be paid, and that paid-up death benefit will keep growing, even if it's just sitting in your drawer at home. The next slide here shows us what the wealth curve looks like. Money making money. Or if you've ever heard that scenario of getting a checkerboard, putting a penny on, and then doubling it every space till you complete the checkerboard, do you have any idea how much money you'll end up with if you actually did that? Number one, you wouldn't have the money to complete the last two-thirds of it, probably. But it's tens of millions of dollars. Look up a penny and double it every square on a checkerboard and find out how much money that really becomes. Another killer today is delaying the wealth curve. Every time you delay it, every time you say, well, we're going to start saving when the house is paid off. We're going to start saving when college is paid off. We're going to start saving when the kids are out of school. What you're doing is you're shrinking that curve and making it virtually impossible to really accumulate a large amount of wealth for yourself and your heirs. Where do we put our money? We put our money in the stock market. Those of you that were around in 87 know exactly what happened. 2000, 2001, big declines in the stock market. 2008, we had clients who had $100,000 in a 529 when they needed the money, they only had 60. Is it safe? Is it gambling? Actually, that's up to you. Where else can you put your money? You can put it in real estate, the house of sticks, as we call it. I have many clients who are attempting to make money flipping houses. In every scenario in the Pittsburgh area I look at, they never put into their projections, what if the house isn't rented for a third of the time, 20% of the time, 25% of the time? I also have friends who went out to Phoenix 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and started buying houses in Phoenix and Las Vegas. Many of those houses are still underwater today. If we could start talking about where we would put our money now that had guarantees so we knew we wouldn't lose principal, we might bring up savings accounts. Again, you're going to make as much in a savings account as you would if you stuck your money in your sock. CDs don't pay much. I saw one the other day. Five-year CD paying 1.5%. Again, not too exciting. Insurance contracts is another place. They're safe, liquid. I'm not going to get into all the scenarios that make them different from banks, but, but I can talk to you about it at some point in time. We have some contracts now that over the first five to 10 years, the growth is approximately equal to 5%, not bad in today's environment. So let's describe the perfect investment. And when I had this survey passed out at a workshop, people said, well, my perfect investment would have no risk. It would have guarantees. It would have liquidity so I could get my hands on my money when I needed it. There would be some kind of leverage advantages. Sort of like I could collateralize that money and maybe keep it in there and borrow against it. I kind of like it to be tax deferred because I don't need it right now, but I'm going to need it later. Tax free? Yeah, but I don't want to buy municipal bonds and I really don't understand how that other stuff works. But if it could be tax free, that'd be great. Transfer to the next generation? Yeah, I'd love to be able to give my kids a head start, give them and teach them how money works and how what I leave them will last their lifetime and their children's lifetimes. This brings us to the Insphere family banking concept. This instrument is the same instrument used by banks, corporations, and large family trusts. They are putting their money in safe, secure, insured contracts with mutual insurance companies. We use the same customized concepts for our clients' freedom accounts. We customize your freedom accounts to help you pay for and finance college expenses, large family purchases, other family expenses like an automobile. Every so often they wear out and you have to buy new ones. If you understand how to set that money aside on a regular basis, you're ahead of the game and you can take that financing charge and pay yourself. Our accounts are also liquid, they're safe, there's a guaranteed growth, they're protected from lawsuits, they provide multi-generation wealth transfers, and you control your own purchasing by capturing the interest you would pay others. The additional benefits from the Insphere Family Banking concept are you have guaranteed access to your money. There are no surrender charges. You don't have to wait to get the money. We have clients who have it wire transferred in 48 hours. If you were to become disabled and you can't complete your banking concept, the insurance company will make the deposits for you. It can be used as a health savings account. It can also be used, as I mentioned before, a college planning tool. You can use it to coordinate retirement programs and your Social Security. 
It provides a tax-free death benefit when you die, not when the term insurance runs out, and certainly not when your employee benefit plans runs out. It also offers estate planning ideas for generation wealth, tax never growth, debt management and debt consolidation, and funding businesses. I hope I've given you a few things to think about. Please go to the website www.insphere.mg.com. Have some fun with that website. Actually watch and read what's on that website. Sign up for the free insider tips. And when you're ready to come and see us and see how you can begin managing your own future, drop us an email and we'll get you in no obligation to explain in detail how this concept of Insphere Family Banking might work for you and your family. Begin managing your own future. Talk to you again soon. Bye now.